Hello YouTube, welcome, Red Pad Protos here. Today I wanna show you like a small build highlight here. Um, I'm gonna check out my Sentinel and I'm gonna show you my Sentinel and I'm gonna talk about how I plan this character or like how this character is planned out for the endgame now and what gear he's using, what skill point allocation he has, which devotions you should go for and like how to with your attributes correctly as well and then um, I'm gonna show you like some small clips of some like harder bosses I did on this character mainly local most of the time and yeah I'm gonna try to do this for not only this character I'm gonna continue doing this for my other characters as well so you will have like one video where you can like see the character in one video and I, you can see me explain everything about this character all right so let's get started here so this is a Sentinel, as you can see, and this is a Sentinel based around Chaos of Reckoning, and this is basically the enabling weapon for this type of build. Uh, I have a bunch of um, auras I will gonna, I'm gonna use here, so I'm gonna spawn my second guardian here. So this is how it looks in combat stance. Um, now let's check out um, the skill allocation right let's start with this one so um <clears throat> obviously you want to have your mastery bar at least at 40 points here to be able to use our reckoning and soul fire and you want to hard cap these as high as possible so you want to put all your points like as many points as you can into these two uh, skills here so i've reckoning obviously because it's your main damage spell your main damage spell will always be maxed out and then soul fire also because it's like part of your main damage damage spell and also because of the reduction to aim and the enemy targets damage um having this only at 14 is well a little low for my taste but i mean it's not really possible to have this much higher on this type of chaos but at least the way i plan it out um like the obvious well auras or buffs that you should always have as an oath keeper are the presence of virtue Haven, Rebuke, Ascension, and Clarity of Purpose. Um, I have 12 out of 12 Presence of Virtue here, which is like the soft cap. Um, you can put more points here if you want to, um, but you will get small diminishing returns, so 12 out of 12 is kind of the best value, and then you can put more points if you feel like you want more offensive ability and more energy regeneration for it. Um, take second point, Haven. Um, I took this just for the percent HP, like and like okay, healing effects increase is also pretty good because I'm using Bell of the Rig. Other than that, yeah, this is just safety measure for hardcore. You can like if you're playing softcore, you can probably just one point this and you should be fine for sure. And I mean, you can also put like pull some points from here and put them over here in the presence of virtue. These are like very flexible points, and then one point in rebuke because well, I don't really need more than one point here. Physical damage here will get converted to, um, well, actually it won't even get converted to chaos. So there, that's like a one pointer and just a one pointer to have reflected damage reduction and resistance to life reduction. It doesn't really do anything besides that. Oh so yeah, just a one pointer. Um, now resilience. This is Oathkeeper's <coughs> uh, circuit breaker, and it's very good. Um, there are some value points to consider like you either put this at 5 out of 12 or at 11 out of 12 or at 14 out of 12 in my opinion at 14 out of 12 you gain plus six percent max all res when this procs also 13 percent fizz res and 13 percent da and i mean since i have the points um which is mainly because i have reckoning builds kind of tend to like focus their <clears throat> like all of their points into just health reckoning so you don't really need like a lot of other um, skills so you have quite some skill points ready for your um, passives or like um, circuit breakers like this one but yeah if you're po more point starved just you can consider taking this only to 11 or to 5 now ascension this is probably the best skill in oathkeeper it has damage absorption similar to the Inquisitor seal a little bit less though um, but it's still super good because you don't have to stand in a seal. You can basically, this is a seal 
to run around with basically. Um, yeah, I mean the all damage and fire retaliation. Like all damage is also pretty good for us, obviously. But fire retaliation, we don't really care about that on this world. Um, but yeah, it's super good, makes you tankier. And then this one gives you more OA, more re CC resistance, life leech, energy leech. This one greatly improves your damage and also survivability as well. Um, this has like um, diminu very hard diminishing, diminishing returns after the soft cap, so you should always soft cap this. Um, ascension, you can like hard cap this, so, like put as many points here as you want. Um, I'm gonna talk about the Guardian a little bit later. Uh, you can see I have one point here and one point here, which kind of doesn't make sense to you maybe at this point, but I'm gonna explain this later. Now onto the Occultist tree. Um, obviously we're gonna take 50 skill points here as well um, to get this exclusive skill, Possession. This is for a Chaos build, obviously the best choice a Sentinel has. Um, yeah, this gives us 18% damage absorption, which is also very great. Um, chaos resistance, some chaos multipliers, and also some flat chaos damage, which is actually very good. And also, the skill disruption protection, which is pretty good because you're kind of spinning all all around all the time, and you don't want to get disrupted by that. Um, take into a do remember that even if this says like 100% skill disruption protection, your actual cap will be 80%, because you need like 80% is always the cap, and you will need like plus max res to go over 80%, but there is no stat like this for disruption resistance, I think, so yeah, you basically have 80%. It's pretty good, though. Um, yeah, so, this, like, basically every single stat here is useful, useful for you, right? The percent multiplier, flat damage, absorption, chaos rest, and skill disruption. Um, now the other rather obvious choices here are Solaris Witchfire. This one gives you flat chaos damage and attack speed. Second right, this gives you percent chaos damage and vitality resistance. And I mean, the flat vitality is kind of whatever, but yeah. And then we have Blood of Dreek here. Um, this is obviously very good. Gives you 156 OA, restores your HP by 28% if you activate it. Um, yeah, I mean, just OA buff and heal, very nice. Staple for every uh, occultist ever. And then the aspect of the Guardian, which is connected to this. This will give you 12% physical resistance and 100% poison resistance. So yeah, you don't have to worry about poison resistance ever as an occultist. And 12% physical resistance is also a lot, so this helps out this build because this is kind of, well, melee range build, so it will get hit by a lot of physical damage every now and then. Um, okay, so same here again, you soft cap this only. Um, as you can see, like after 12 out of 12, you get diminishing returns, especially for the physical resistance, and you probably don't need more poison resistance anyways. Also, this doesn't have any chaos multipliers, so yeah, you only care about the physical and the poison resistance on this one. And then a one pointer in Doombolt, this is, well, because I have quite some modifiers to this. Um, you don't see them here, you would see them in Grim Tools. I mean, you can check out the Grim Tools link down below as well. Um, the reason why this is so good on this build is because of the weapon here. This adds like reduced target's resistances, so this is basically type um, B resistance reduction, right? And also we are using two-piece harbinger, which gives this 140% weapon damage. And since we're using a two-hander, we have a lot of weapon damage. And then by just putting one point here, this is actually a lot of damage for one point. Um, yeah, this is gonna be it for skills for now. Let's take a look at the um, devotions next. So for devotions, I try to get the two very important devotions for Chaos, which are Eldritch Fire. This is a must-have for every Chaos build, because of the resistance reduction that it provides, and then also Hungering Void. This one has huge Chaos multipliers, crit damage, and total speed, meaning also attack speed. Also, this node has flat chaos damage, that's very good, and I mean, these nodes are universally pretty good. They have good OA, good DA, chaos resistance, and also like 100% chaos damage here on this one. Then, since I'm using a two-hander, <coughs> the Kraken is kind of an obvious choice as well. Um, you get crit damage here, movement speed, and attack speed. Like 20% attack speed, 5% movement speed, 15% crit, and some other like... Or damage bonuses, so this is pretty good as well. 
Um, now this is like everything I need for offense for this character to be honest. And the rest was either to um, well fix my affinities or to get more defenses because we are kind of we are two hander and we are meleeing most of the time. So yeah, you need to be tanky enough to um, do specific bosses. So let's talk about other tier one devotions I was using here. Um, the ghoul, for example. This has an active that activates like below 45% HP, gives you a lot of physical resistance, attack speed, and a huge amount of lifesteal as well. This is another circuit breaker basically for your um, character, and it's a very good one for all characters that use weapon damage. And obviously our character is using a lot of weapon damage, so yeah, this is very good. And the other nodes in here are pretty good already, like you get some HP, 4% lifesteal, um, I mean, this one is not that great, but you take the one point to get the constellation bonus. Um, I mean, yeah, we need at least 8 reds. I have 10 here, actually. I have 10 here because I had some spare points. And yeah, let's just get more HP here. We did the jackal. And didn't have any purple to go into MP throne. This is a very popular one point, in point here as well. But yeah. Since I have no, no purple, I cannot do this. Um, now I use the Jackal as well for reds. This is for total speed, so again, attack speed. And uh, also this one for physical resistance. What you can probably do now as well is you could go for Revenant maybe. Mm, at the time I made this build, Revenant was not as good as it is now. Um, that said, it's maybe also like maybe too hard to fit it in. I didn't really try to fit it in, but maybe it's too hard to actually fit it. You would probably have to give up maybe Jackal or something else, and maybe you would have some affinity problems. But yeah, consider the Revenant as well for this build, it should be very good. Um, you don't really need the Type B resistance reduction here from the Skeletons though, because you already have the same type on Doombolt, and they're not gonna stack, so yeah. That's probably also the reason why I didn't take the Revenant, because you already have the same Type B resistance reduction in the build. Um, now I needed six greens for Solaris Witchblade, right? I have three greens coming from Hawk and three greens coming from the Lotus. Um, the reason why I took Hawk is because Hawk is one of the best tier one devotions if you don't need a lot of affinity. This provides three affinity for three points. That's not really, that's below average. For example, Skoros Light Proof gives you four for three points, but Hawk has 3% OA on this node. So that's a huge OA bonus, and also crit, dim crit damage. Yeah, whenever you're lacking OA and crit and you need some green devotions, check out Hawk and try to get Hawk. Um, now onto the blue devotions, we need 15 blues for both Dying God and also this one over here, the Obelisk of Men here. So I was using for blue Sator's Guide, uh, the Panther and the Watcher, and also Kraken. So this gives me a 3. 6, 9, 14, and then 1 points in the crossroads, 15 blues. Um, now from like the tier 1 blue devotion, Sator's Guide is just insane. You have physical, a uh, physique, defensive ability here, freeze resistance, and slow resistance. Slow resistance is really big. And then you have also physical resistance on this node. Um, and some physique and 8% movement speed on this one. So yeah, Sator's Guide does Sailor's Guide is awesome, and you can always rush Sailor's Guide on any build ever as your very first devotion. It's always going to be good, especially because of the movement speed early on. Now the Panther is, well, for affinity, like it has 5 affinity points for 4 points Vesta, that's very good. And also it gives you like some well, offensive ability, cunning spirit, all damage, crit damage as well, and OA. But that's pretty good for OA mostly. And then the Watcher, he is insane, like it has Physique, Armor, Armor, Fizz Res, uh, Pierce Res, sorry, hold resistance here, Defensive Ability, 3% Physique, and 5% DA. This is insane for um, Defensive Ability, this is probably the best Devotion in the entire game right now for Defensive Ability, and it's only a Tier 2 Devotion. So if you consider, yeah, I mean, it's... Almost a tier 3 devotion because of the stats, but it doesn't have like an active node. But yeah, this is insanely awesome. I'm using it on 
almost every build I'm playing, I think. Maybe even on every build. But yeah, this is so insane. It's actually in hardcore for like defenses. Um, now I needed some more yellows to get Olisk, right? So for yellows, um, as I mentioned before, I was using the Lotus here. Lotus has health, energy, physical resistance, increases healing effects, HP, energy, vitality resistance, and more energy here. Now, the reason why Lotus is so good on this build is not only because of physical resistance on the second node here, which is already very, very good, um, but also because it gives you a lot of energy. And since I'm not using Bard's Harp, I would have an energy problem, right? Because Eye of Reckoning, as you know, is very en energy intensive. Um, and most Eye of Reckoning builds will have to use either Harp or a Harp and Tree of Life to sustain energy. But this build actually doesn't have to use those. Because we have Lotus, and also I'm using a Conduit here. And the Conduit has over th around 1000 energy, usually. So this increases my max energy pool by a lot, and then percent energy regeneration is also going to be a lot more effective because of my higher pool. And yeah, so Lotus also helps with that. And also, I mean, I'm getting green and yellow, de yellow devotion, which I need. I need both of those for these. For Zola's Witchfire and for Obelisk of Mania. Um, yeah, I mean, now I just ended up needing some more yellows. Basically just two yellows. Um, I went for Lion, this one gives you three yellows. Because, well, why not? I would like to have maybe... Um, I mean, it would have been more efficient to have like a devotion that gives you either more green and yellow or like red and yellow, but there is no red and yellow, and there is only one green and yellow, which is Lotus. So yeah, I was kind of stuck with using Lion here. And I mean, Lion is not awesome, but it's also not completely terrible. As uh, three yellows for three points, I mean, it's worse than Hawk, for example, because the stats on these nodes aren't as good as the ones on Hawk. But it does have 2% physical resistance here. And some movement speed, spirit, HP, DA, health. It's not terrible, it's fine. And this is basically the enabler for the Obelisk of Men here. And Obelisk of Men here is like an insane defensive devotion for any build, basically. We have armor, DA, more armor, especially 150 flat armor is insane. And then you have 10% armor here. DA, percent DA. I mean, this one is useless. But I was going to use this point just to get over here. And this one increases armor absorption, reduces stun, reduces flee freeze duration, and gives me plus 3 max pierce mass. Now the reason why this is so good is it frees up other slots in my components, for example, that I would otherwise have to use for stun duration or armor absorption. And the freeze and pierce resistance is like a nice bonus on top. So this is so good that it's actually like worth take using two points to get there even though this does, does give me nothing um, this one is still worth two points here yeah that's it for my devotions here um, there are maybe some alternatives that you can go for I mean you can try to fix maybe chariot and harp in there um, and you have to fix harp in there if you're not using a conduit and not using lotus so yeah, there are some different ways to make this build, but the way I made it, I think this one is the optimal devotion power thing for it. Um, yeah, onto gear. So for gear, as I told you before, this is the build enabler, the Wrath of Tenebris. Um, the Wrath of Tenebris is a 200 axe, actually. I mean, it looks like a scythe, but it's classified as an axe. And it converts lightning to chaos globally as... 15% or even more, I don't know exactly, this is like a average, not obviously the average roll, this is like some random roll I have. Um, Lifesteal, huge chaos multiplier, flat chaos damage, and the base damage is also flat chaos damage. And it has HP, offensive ability, attack speed, bonuses to Eye Reckoning, Doom Bolt, Occultist, and weapon damage to Eye Reckoning, converts physical to chaos to Eye Reckoning, and Doom Bolt, Weapon Damage, and Reduction to Target Enemy Resistances to Doom Bolt. Um, so yeah, basically that this means that I Reckoning is like the, the physical is full Chaos, and 50% of this Lightning Damage here is also Chaos. 
Now, we still have some fire damage missing here, which we want to convert as much as possible as well. For that, we are using a Void Heart here. Um, try to have up to 30% conversion. I only have 25% per conversion here. So you can get a better roll for this ring for sure. Second ring is the Entropic Coil. Um, this is just uh, an over overall pretty good and solid uh, Chaos ring. His bonus is to Solize Witchfire, Eye of Reckoning, and has flat Chaos damage, and has a proc as well. Um, the Conduit, I was talking about this before already, for the energy. This is, well, for energy, um, for max all res, but most importantly, um, since the Oathkeeper class doesn't have any Chaos resistance reduction, right, you want to either use Razin's Amulet or this one. Razin's Amulet gives you, like, 15% Chaos Resistance Reduction to Curse of Frailty. This one gives the same to Guardians of Empyrean. The reasons I was using this one over Razen's is because this one has plus one Oathkeeper, which makes it easier to hard cap Eye of Reckoning, to, put, like, to get Eye of Reckoning up to 26 out of 16. And also the second reason is I like the Chaos Resistance on the Guardians more than on Curse of Frailty, because Guardians are... well, they're passive, right? So they just run around and then they will apply their debuff by themselves with their attacks. Whereas I would have to like stop spinning and casting Curse of Frailty to apply the cast resistance reduction from Curse of Frailty. I mean Curse of Frailty does have the benefit that if you put like one point here you can also put one point here and also reduce the enemy DA a little bit. So um, using Curse of Frailty would increase your effective OA a little bit more than what I'm using right now. But then again, it, it does interrupt spinning and it does, because of that, interrupt your yes a little bit. So yeah, I'll, I kind of like this one more. This is more the lazy approach. Because you can, well, you don't have to worry about any skills or anything. Um, then for the headpiece and gloves, I'm using two-piece Harbinger here. There are also some other options you can go for here. There's the Eldritch Gaze, for example, from the Sentinel. It's a, it's a blueprint drop, and then you can craft this Sentinel drop, I um, mean the, the Eldritch Gaze headpiece. That's also very good. I'm using 2-piece Hardvinger here because it has more flat chaos damage overall. Like also the 2-piece set is pretty good, and also it has more weapon damage for Doombolt. This means my Doombolt hits harder than the other setup, and also I have more flat damage on Eye of Reckoning. So Eye of Reckoning itself also deals more damage. But I do lose out on the proc that the other hand has. So I'm not really sure whether or not my overall damage is maybe lower than with the other um, Eldritch Gaze hub. Huh? Mm, that said, I kind of like this more because, well, Doombolt hits just like a truck with this, and that's awesome. Um, yeah, I mean, I don't even have only 140 weapon damage, as I said before, I actually have 180% because Tenebris also gives me 40% weapon damage here. So yeah, 180 Doombolt weapon damage is pretty insane. Um, now also another slot here um, that is kind of freed up because we're not using Razians here um, is the Westmans of Severed Faith. This one converts some acid damage to chaos damage, so some of the acid damage I'm getting from Blood of also will convert to Chaos damage, and will scale up. And also this one gives Ascension bonus and Doombolt damage, and also has a proc that you can toggle on. Where is it? Okay, did, did they change this around? Oh no, this one, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it looks like Aether Corruption, but this is actually the Severed Faith. Um, Toggle aura for yourself, and I mean this gives you flat chaos damage, percent chaos damage, healing effect increase against. So yeah, blood of Drake heals you for a lot, and also the life steal from Tenebris heals you for a lot, and it also fixes your aether resistance for free basically. So yeah, this is very very good. Um, onto the pants, you can use some green pants here instead of this one. I was going for choices of Barbaros here. They're like overall good for. Characters that use attack speed, um, yeah, I mean, it has the battle cry proc, gives you 150 all damage and 10% total speed, that's pretty good. 
and also the pants themselves have huge amounts of OA, a little bit of DA, physical resistance, casual resistance, and yeah, that's all we really care about. They're pretty offensive overall, but I mean, we have like enough HP and enough DA already, and resistances are fine as well, like this, and I mean, stun res is way over cap with ascension as well. So yeah, these are pretty good, and fit a bit like this perfectly. But you can go for like green boots, uh, green pants instead. Um, we're using one piece of rosins after all, the belt here. Um, I mean, it's mainly because there are no better alternatives to this, and this one has flat chaos damage, percent chaos damage, um, multiplicative damage to Cothonians, OA, elemental res, beat res, and plus one occultist. So yeah, that's very good of all. We don't really care about the cold damage to con co to chaos conversion. But yeah, that's still very good. Um, now the we're gonna go over to the boots first. Um, this is like a pretty obvious filler boots. These are super good if you need sun re reduction and you need some HP and also some chaos resistance. I mean poison or elemental resistance. Um, you can swap these out for other boots though. Um, if you have like some insane green boots that you crafted go with those instead, but do remember that you do need the stun resistance kind of on this character. Um, I mean, if you have like green boots of kings, for example, then you're you're fine. Or like thunderstruck of kings, obviously use those instead of these. But yeah, these are just solid all-around boots that you can use on basically any character as a filler. Um, now the shoulders here, I'm using Valdoran's shoulder guard here, because Valdoran's has plus 3 Eye of Reckoning bonus. This helps me hard cap my of reckoning to 26. Um, well, the rest I was just using some pieces that would help me fix out my resistances. I'm using one here to fix pierce and aether resistance mainly. Um, let's see, those are kind of lowish, so yeah. Without like with taking these off, they would suffer a lot. Um, and yeah, I mean the fire resistance is like whatever, but it's. Pretty decent actually, like overcapping fire by so much is not that bad because there are a lot of enemies that reduce your fire resistance by a lot. For example, Sharzul or uh, like Lokar and some others as well. So, yeah, this is pretty good to have. Now, the last pieces are gonna be the Serenity Relic. Serenity Relic is like overall very solid, has a well. It has a circuit breaker, but it's not the most reliable, I would say, because it only activates when you're below 35% HP, and you can just get one shot at maybe like less than 30, uh, like at 36 or 37%, right? And then this won't even activate. Um, but it's still pretty good on this character, I would say, because we have a high um, health pool and also some absorption. So when having these two up and like a lot of HP, Chances are pretty high that you won't get one shot above 35% HP. So you this will actually trigger and save you in like dire situations. Now another one that is also pretty good, like at a medal here, the Mark of Unlife. This is also universally a uh, usable medal for like any build. It's a very defensive medal. And the main reason why this is so good is because of DA. Like this one has flat DA, percent DA. So that's uh, a huge amount of the aid that you can get on a medal, like for the other medals, this one gives you a lot. And also it has plus 3 max fire code and lightning resistance, which is also very good. I mean 3% all max all res is comparable to uh, reduced 15% targets enemy damage, right? So that's like actually insane. Uh, I mean it also has a circuit breaker. Uh, the unlife proc activates at below 35% HP, so at the same time as Serenity. So this one also restores 20% of your HP and basically makes you almost immune to any kind of CC. So these two together are like big lifesavers, or potentially big lifesavers. Um, if you're free to use another metal here if you want to, this is not... This is more like a personal preference of mine, and it's also very good in hardcore, but in softcore you don't need to use this, obviously. Um, feel free to use anything else. 
Um, then components are, for the most part, pretty self-explanatory, I would say. I mean, on rings nowadays, you always, or like you almost always use bloody crystals, unless you're using a shield. These give you increased armor, bleed resistance, and DA. Um, on the amulet, you use Seal of Annihilation. It's just the best on every build, except for maybe pet builds. Like, yeah, it's not the best on pet builds, but other than that, it's like the best for almost every character. Um, on the metal, I'm using Arcane Spark here. Again, because we're not using the Harp Devotion. We kind of need more Energy Leech in another way. So yeah, this helps with Energy Leech as well. Um, then these two pieces here, sacred plating, they're there to well, fix vitality and aether resistance and also increase armor absorption. Then we have a titan plating over here to increase my overall armor and my pierce resistance, which I was kind of like, kind of lacking on this build. And since we have the obelisk of men here, right, we don't have to worry about too much armor absorption from components. So that's why I can get away with like double sacred plating here and an ancient armor plate here. We don't have to go for scaled hide or we don't have to go for a third sacred plating slash living armor in the helm. Um, yeah, that's why I'm using ancient armor plate here over scaled hide. It provides me with the same amount of armor absorption in total because we already have a lot. And gives you some flat armor, increases your armor and physique on top compared to scaled hide. And yeah, then the last thing here for the Seed of Blades that I'm using for the weapon. It's uh, lifesteal and increases armor again and physical and, and pierce resistance. I um, mean, you can also use a Seed of Might here instead if you want to. Would like to have more physical resistance, resistance instead of more lifesteal and more pierce res and more armor. But I mean, this one is pretty good, I would say. Um, augments, Ravager's Eye for the two-hander, Osiris Temper, pretty obvious choice for the jewelry, and yeah, I mean then the rest is like trying to fix resistances, um, most of this like Pierce, just Chaos. Actually, um, I see one mistake I made here, I put an Aether one here, right, and then a Pierce one here. Whenever you have a situation like this, you should put Pierce and Aether on both of them instead, because like double resistances are always better than single resistances. So if I had like Pierce Aether here, this would be eight Pierce, eight Aether, right? And then eight Pierce, eight Aether here. If you combine combine the two, I would have sixteen Aether and sixteen Pierce, and now I only have ten Pierce and Pierce and twelve percent Aether. So I have to fix that later. Um, but yeah, that's gonna be it for this. Uh, highlight here and we are gonna go and check out some other gameplay here so so for a small little gameplay f uh, feature I'm gonna do like one Guardian of Solar run here for you guys um, also I forgot to mention which movement augment I have on my medal I'm using the Dark Desires right now which gives me uh, like a Chaos Strike ability which also reduces target's enemy offensive ability. Um, this makes basically this my engage tool and wire smite my disengage tool. So I have wire smite on my personal like disengage hotbar key here. And uh, yeah, you should always try to not use this in combat so that you have it ready whenever you need it to disengage. And otherwise, yeah, you engage with dark desires spin around and uh, yeah that's basically it then you can use virus mine to like move around there are no enemies close to you uh, I mean you plus press uh, blood of the reek basically off cooldown all the time and um, yeah, use ascension and doom bolt for elites or like purple bosses Maybe there are some elites here, let's see. Yeah, this one for example. We use the Doom Bolt here to reduce its resistances further. And well, after that, just keep on spinning. Mm, 
And let's check out the solar boss here. And whenever you like in dire, more dire situations, I'm always using Tincture here. And if I'm like really close to dying, I am also using a cluster. Also like just safety measures measures that um, you should probably use on every hardcore build. I can show you where to buy the tinctures and where to farm the Aether clusters in a second here. But yeah, I mean that's the guy also died pretty fast to be honest. Um, the, so the tinctures, you can buy them in Homestead. Over here, so once you're in Homestead and you're... I think you just have to be tolerated or something with them, right? Or friendly. Okay, you have to be friendly. And then you can buy these courageous tinctures here. Um, put them somewhere in your inventory. And put them on your hotbar. And this is like a huge defensive ability and armor bonus. Which is very helpful for a lot of fights. Um, yep. And the Aether Clusters, I mean, they will drop from uh, like the Aether Clusters that you can kill all around the um, Cairn. Um, a nice way to farm them is probably in the Emulation, for example, or the Conflagration, or also in Pod Library. Yeah, so basically these two... Abilities I'm not even using that much. It's just uh, Engage, Doombolt, Tincture, Heal, Ascension, uh, well, your Panic Button, Heal, and Virus Might, moving around, spinning around. Alright, let's check out the Locker fight I did on this character the last time. Alright, so I also want to show you a Locker fight here. Um, I did some small changes to this prior to this. Um, there is crushing verdict usage now, so I pulled like the ten points here, which I sub or like not mandatory. So I pulled a total of eleven points here, and then I put one point here and ten points here. This puts this up to twelve out of twelve, and helps me with like enemy the A reduction. So this basically increases my effective OA by quite some bit. Um, because of that, I had to respec 3 points more into Spirit. I had 8 points in Spirit before, now I have 11 points. Because you do need 594 Spirit at least to equip those chest pieces here. So my DA took like a very minor hit. And my HP also did a, take a little hit. Um, this actually took like a, a huge hit now because of this modifier. Um, but yeah, I mean... The build took maybe like 500 HP hit and that's it. And I had like 16.6 before and now it's around 16k I think, so yeah, it should be fine. Um, anyways, let's start up low car fight here. So for low car, I'm always, because these are like super cheap to use, right? Just pop the royal jellies, they're super cheap. Um, but I mean, you can use a flame drinker here as well. But for this run actually, to show you, I'm not gonna use or flame drinker. These are also pretty good that you can or could use probably to be safe, but this time I'm gonna use it. So yeah, let's fight the locker here. And he spawns with a hammer. Hammer most of the time means more damage on average, or like higher damage spikes at least. see my HP wobbling around more nervously. I'm trying to use a potion and also the tincture to compensate a bit. Also don't forget the sanction. Also remember that when you cut around, you can always cast Doombolt to heal from range because Doombolt actually has so much weapon damage and you have a shit ton of lifesteal so you are gonna heal a lot there. I mean the reason I couldn't like face tank to the end was probably due to like a small misplay there. But I mean sometimes, especially in hardcore, it's like better to be safe than sorry, you know? Yeah, anyways that's like the dog card kill. 
pick this up as well for iron to set it. Overall, it's like a pretty safe and chill fight. Uh, like other things like dungeons, etc., are even safer and more chill on this character, I would say. Killing Gargaboy on second stage. Um, when, like when you save Ascension in the first stage, you don't use it in the first stage, but you save Ascension for the second stage of Gargaboy. You, you can actually kill Gargaboy on this character before he spawns his first volcano. That's pretty awesome. And, like not a lot of, lot of builds can do that, so yeah, that's pretty great. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's gonna be it for this highlight video for the Sentinel. Feel free to check out the Grim Tools link below. Feel free to check out my streams, check out my VODs on this character maybe as well. And feel free to like or comment this video. Any kind of feedback, feedback is appreciated. And yeah, there's also gonna be a link for my Discord if you want to join my Discord server. Ask me some other stuff there. I mean, yeah, that's gonna be it. Thank you guys for watching and see you guys next time.